Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a potent storm system that's gonna bring damaging winds and large hell with a major flood risk. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. And today's question of the day with the, with the July 4th weekend holiday coming up, what do you typically like to do on your holiday weekend? Are you one that just kind of veges out by the pool? Or do you have friends and family that come over? Or you just want to kind of relax and some watch some TV and kind of kick back? So yeah, definitely let me know and, and leave, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. But we got a lot to talk about. Uh, we've Here's uh, the latest uh, 500 millibar, and you can kind of really depict on what this pattern is really setting up. This is what they call an omega block. We're stuck in between two heat domes. We've had this very impressive, uh, if not historic, heat dome over the Pacific Northwest. That has shifted off just a tad bit further off into the east uh, today, but now that heat dome's more or less over uh, eastern uh, Washington and Oregon, getting over parts of Canada as well as uh, Idaho, getting into Montana, but we also have a second heat dome out here into uh, the northeast where they've seen some near record high temperatures in much of New England today, but it's stuck in the middle. We've got a deepening trough and we've got some cooler temperatures for much of Colorado uh, into uh, New Mexico and portions of the Texas panhandle uh, with that deepening trough. So let's kind of delve into the details. What we're looking at is, is the overall surface map uh, this afternoon. You can definitely see on you know, this dotted line here, there's been a little bit cooler air filtering in off the Eastern Pacific flow. That's gonna bring some welcome cooler temperatures, you know, cooler is relative not not the 115 in portland like they saw yesterday but definitely about you know 15 degrees cooler today uh for much of if not 20 degrees uh for much of along the east coast there you can definitely see a uh, tropical storm enrique uh down here that's bringing some some needed rain into portions of new mexico and then we have that stalled frontal boundary uh right that's going to be the culprit of some heavier rains that's getting into portions of kansas as uh, well as oklahoma we do have a cold front that's trying to filter in into the northeast but that's not pushing south as of yet, but they will tomorrow. And that's gonna set the stage from some very active storms and some severe weather for much of the Northeast. So for today, here's the temperatures. This was at two o'clock Central Standard Time. So this is more or less noon time in the Pacific Northwest. And you can definitely see, you know, 79 degrees in Portland is a far cry from what they were at yesterday. We've got a still five, five hours to warm up there. So it's gonna be a lot of hotter. But yeah, there's those 100 degree temperatures shifting a little bit further off into the east. So still some deadly heat out here, 108, and these could easily top 115, 117 later on this afternoon, about five o'clock uh, during peak heating time. Uh, so that's going to continue just a little bit moving off into the uh, east as we go through time uh, throughout the week, getting into the weekend. But on the other side, into the northeast, we're also dealing with some some higher uh, record highs. Uh, it's all the way up to 99 degrees already in Boston. So that is their, that it ties their record high. They could easily jump up to another, you know, 100, another degree to bump it up to 100 degrees. So, but much of the Northeast is well into the 90s. I mean, look at Portland, Maine, 95 degrees. But that's going to be the culprit for our severe weather as we go into the day on a Wednesday. And you can definitely see the map. I mean, Enrique kind of loses its luster. It does impact Cabo San Lucas with some uh, with some uh, tropical storm force winds. But after it impacts them, it's definitely going to be uh, losing, going more or less post tropical and kind of fade out uh, over time. But the main story tomorrow is going to be your severe weather and much of the northeast where that trough kind of mixes in into the mid latitudes, uh, bringing that cooler air and where they've seen those record high temperatures uh, this afternoon. That's where they're going to see some of the severe weather tomorrow. And in fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted an enhanced risk for much of Boston. So places where you're getting seeing 100 degree temperatures today are going to be seeing some strong, severe thunderstorms tomorrow with some damaging winds and large hail being the major players into Worcester, into Springfield, Massachusetts, Manchester, getting into Lowell, uh, Massachusetts. 
you know, as well as getting into Providence and, and places like Syracuse and Bridgeport, Connecticut and New Haven, you still could be under the gun. And just because you guys are in New York City won't see some of the some of the bigger storms, you're still going to be those storms are still going to be packing a punch on much of New York City and to Philly and to uh, Columbus, Ohio, as well as all the way into Cleveland, Ohio, and even into portions of uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Going in tomorrow afternoon, getting into the early evening hours. And like I mentioned, the main threat with these systems, with those higher temperatures in the mid 90s, pushing 100 degrees today, that's a lot of dry air in the mid latitudes. And with that trough digging in, that typically ensues downburst winds. And that's what you could be seeing tomorrow with those damaging wind threat and much of the area that's seeing that enhanced risk. So those areas could see that 60 mile per hour, if not greater, wind gust at times. So definitely be on the lookout for those downbursts, if not straight line winds at times as we go into the afternoon hours, into the early evening hours. And yeah, even in the portions, like I mentioned, Providence and uh, Syracuse, you could still see those higher wind gusts uh, with the outflow from these thunderstorms as they continue moving across and uh, another threat is going to be your large hail. I mean, all the way in the areas that typically don't see severe weather as much, you know, for portions of Vermont and New Hampshire, getting into Maine, yeah, you could be under the gun for large hail, if not tornadoes uh, tomorrow. So could see an isolated tornado in that neck of the woods where they're seeing those higher temperatures today. You're definitely going to be looking at some strong to severe thunderstorms as we go into the afternoon hours uh, tomorrow afternoon. So definitely be on the lookout for that and, and to have your weather radios handy. So as we go into the day on uh, Thursday, there's your surface map. Uh, we've got that cooler air kind of mixing into the Northeast by then. So that's gonna put a stop to a lot of some of the severe weather, but where that boundary is and where that cold front hasn't hit the atmosphere yet, you're gonna be looking at some of those stronger storms and those heavier rains in much of Tennessee, getting into Kentucky, as well as uh, West Virginia. That'll be going on to the, uh, the day on uh, Thursday. And like I mentioned here, off here, this you can kind of see the depiction line where this uh, boundary is continue shifting off a little bit further off into the east. So that'll bring some of the, some of the, you know, the record high temperature shifting further off into Idaho and to Montana, where they're still going to be seeing those higher highs all the way through the end of the weekend. So definitely be on the lookout for that with those record high temperatures continuing uh, for you guys for several more days uh, to come. So as we extend the view and we go into Friday, I mean, look at that. I mean, this is kind of a rare sight going into the holiday weekend on a Friday, July the 12th. A we're talking a cold front all the way into Oklahoma City and down to the south of that, the steering currents this time of year are pretty light. So this is gonna be a slow moving front. Whenever you have a slow moving front and you have those overriding conditions, that's where you can set the stage for those really uh, heavier rains, if not flooding rains. So as we get into the weekend, flooding becomes a huge concern for areas to the south with this stalled crawling front. So on Friday, portions of the Texas Panhandle, getting into portions of New Mexico, getting into North Texas, into East Texas, and much of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and Florida, get into the Carolina states, and yes, even to the New England states, you could be seeing some of those heavier rains as that cold front will continue shifting off a little bit further off into the south. As we get into the day on Saturday and enjoying your uh, July 4th holiday weekend, there's the cold front. We were talking, it more or less lies over North Texas into the south of that. You guys in Houston, Austin, San Antonio, you could be under the gun for some of those heavier rains pushing across. And that will shift further south into Lake Charles, into Baton Rouge, into New Orleans area, getting into uh, portions of, uh, you know, like I said, Mississippi and Alabama, getting into southern Georgia and the, and the Florida panhandle right along that area, along the coastline where this thing could really start to stall out. And it definitely becomes more of a concern as we get into the day on Sunday because it really starts to crawl and creep and slow down to a halt uh, right along central Texas and much along the coast. So right along the coastline with, with that warm gulf to be able to take advantage of, you have those overriding conditions 
yeah flooding is becoming a huge concern along this area into portions of uh, Houston and to Beaumont and to East Texas getting into Lake Charles uh Baton Rouge New, you know New Orleans Gulfport uh you know places in say Destin all those areas could be under the gun for some very heavy rain you know over extended period of time so we're talking a compounding effect of Friday Saturday Sunday and going into Monday even your holiday weekend as that stalls out uh yeah we could still see that flood threat but Sunday is your holiday and that's I mean we're talking some cooler temperatures to the north of that front I mean how many times have you seen an 84 degree high temperature in Oklahoma City for your July 4th weekend that's been a rare sight and that's what's on the table and it's hard pressed to even see a 90 degree temperature in the entire in the entire state of Texas so yeah I mean it's been kind of the flip side where that ridge has been dominating where it's been primarily drier and much of the northwest and much of the northern states where they're going to be seeing that ridge of high pressure continue to dominate for them they're going to be experiencing those cooler conditions and much of new mexico much of colorado that'll extend into kansas and oklahoma getting into the texas and right along this boundary here that's where that cold front's going to lie obviously bringing some of those cooler conditions with that cloud cover and no more record high temperatures in the Northeast. We're talking widespread seventies for you guys coming up for your July 4th holiday. That's going to be some great barbecue weather and get out there and enjoy the family and uh, take advantage of that very nice weather to come after that severe weather you're going to have to be dealing with tomorrow. But yeah, there's the setup for Monday. There's that cold front. It will start, start to kind of fade and that will be a compounding effect of possibly what's to come in from the Caribbean that's potentially probably going to be going into the, uh, the, the Gulf of Mexico by then from Invest 97L that we've been kind of talking about. So this will be a combination of a Friday, Saturday, Sunday going into Monday stalled cold front and then going into Tuesday of next week, get into the next week, then we could be looking at a Gulf system a tropical storm if not possibly even a hurricane by then going to be impacting the coastline potentially so that could be a, a compounding flooded flood rest uh that, that's going to be it, it could cause extended problems for uh, you know an extended period of time so definitely uh be on the lookout for that so yes as we go into tuesday you can definitely see the setup where you have those darker greens as that cold front will just more or less fade out and lift back up as a warm front that opens the door for the gulf to open up again and push whatever system that might be coming that way going towards the united states so even if it's not a tropical system it's still going to be a heavy rainmaker for much of texas and much of louisiana and much of mississippi and alabama and this will extend into arkansas too so there's a there's a huge concern for flood risk along the coast as we get into later on this weekend and especially going into next week and looking at the latest some of some of the latest uh, guidance basically implies that along this area where there's that cold front that could stall out right along the right along the coastline so some of these areas could pick up double digit totals you know over an extended period of time between now and even next tuesday so that's that's a huge concern for a, a you know a major flood risk and where that you know heat dome is going to be under over the northwest yeah it's going to be pretty much high and dry for you guys and where those stronger storms in much of uh, the ohio valley getting into the getting into the northeast you're going to be picking up some welcome rains but the heavier rains will definitely be along the coastline. So if you live anywhere from say Houston to Lake to, to get to, to Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle, definitely be on the lookout for not only that stalled front for flood risk, but potentially a tropical type system that might be coming your way by you know sometime next week as we get deeper into the weekend. Of course, I'll be talking a lot more about it in, in the videos to come. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm